welcome everybody to the Taos First uh, Presbyterian Church. Uh, people coming from Taos, from Arizona, from Alaska, and probably other points of interest. So the call to worship today, uh, this is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Times. One help is in the name of the Lord. Made heaven. heaven and earth. Our joy comes from the heart of God, who transforms us into open-handed givers of hope. Our grace comes from God's compassion, who breaks the bonds that tie us to sin and death. Blessed be the Lord our God, who reveals to us the one who brings us new life. Today, the opening hymn is When Israel Was in Egypt's Land. And in the purple hymnal, please turn to page one, page 52. In the blue hymnal, please turn to page 334. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Down, go, down, go. Way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh. Let my people go. Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. If not, I'll smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. No more shall they in bondage toil, let my people go. Let them come out with Egypt's spoil, let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Let all from the bondage flee, let my people go, and let us all in Christ be free, let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. They call to confession today. We worship God, the deliverer, who brought Moses and the Hebrew people out of the waters and will just as surely deliver us from our times of trial. Trusting in God's steadfast grace and mercy, let us confess our sin together. Holy One, there is much we must confess. When we discount another's pain or overlook neighbors in distress, forgive us. When we choose call out words over compassionate impulses, forgive us. When we think others less deserving of grace and ration kindness as if it could be exhausted, forgive us. Have mercy upon us, Lord, and heal our brokenness so that every word and deed that proceeds from our hearts might glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's hear the good news. The mercy of Christ is from everlasting to everlasting. 
and in the waters of baptism, we are reborn. So friends, whatever you walked in with this morning, you can set it down. You're forgiven. Whatever you've done, wherever you've been, whatever shame or grief or regret you have from the past, you can let that go for God has forgiven you. And wherever we go on this journey of life, we worship a God who brings us through the waters and who always will wash and clean and love and forgive us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The uh, prayer of illumination, which will uh, bring us into a time of readings from the Holy Bible. Test testify to us, O God, by the voice of your spirit. Put your law in our hearts. Write your word in our minds and show your will in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading today is from Exodus chapter 1, verses 8 through 22, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version Bible, but you may find the Bible that you have from the pew. So Genesis chapter 1, starting on verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven in the Oh, sorry, Exodus. That's okay. We're going to reference Genesis 1. So you were just previewing. That's right. Okay, here we go. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war befall us, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens, and they built for Pharaoh store cities, Pithon and Ramses. But the more they oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they made the people of Israel serve with rigor and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. And in all their work, they made them serve with rigor. Then the king of Egypt, said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Sifra and the other Puha, when you serve as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But it, if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and let the male children live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and are delivered before the midwives come to them. So God dealt well 
with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all of his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. So the word of God, thanks be to God. The second reading is from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took to wife a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a godly, a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds in the river's brink. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and her maidens walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to fetch it. When she opened it, was, she saw the child and lo, the babe was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Then his sister said to the Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women? to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the child went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she named him Moses. Or she said, because I drew him out of the water. So this is the word of our God. Thanks be to God. God. Always, we will hear uh, Jackson solo live. I have the link. I'll put that in the comment section on Facebook. And in the chat section here on Zoom and email it out to y'all later this week. Take it away. Our help is in the name of God the Lord, the one who made Creator of the world, each living thing, come bless the Lord, lift up your hearts and sing, our help is in the name of God the Lord. Have the upper hand. Call on God's name, the Lord, the great I am. When troubles rise and all around gives way, remember God stays with us night and day. captive's prayer, like birds escaping from the 
colors We are set free, our praises now ascend. Bless be the Lord, Creator, Savior, friend. Our help is in the name of God, the Lord. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 16. Verses 13 through 20. Hear what the Spirit is saying, God's church. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others. Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation fill our hearts. Be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Something is missing from this morning's Old Testament reading. Or to be more specific, someone. We've all heard the story of baby Moses in the basket. Maybe we've even seen the movie, the Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments version or Disney's Prince of Egypt, take your pick. But at times as I've heard this story told, it's taken me quite a while to notice the absence of a pretty important character, God. God does not show up in this story at a well exception, but aside, this is 20 through 21, what John just read for us. We are told that because those midwives, Shifra and Pua, obeyed Pharaoh's orders and let the Hebrew children live, God gave families of their own, which is all well and good. I'm happy for them, but with the root on the loose and people and killing their children well it just seems like God could do a little better the absence of God in this story may not seem strange to us we're used to secular tales but this is not typical of the Hebrew Bible. These books this book of stories Books of story that we call the Old Testament are written in the language of myths and legends. They talk about gods and monsters, angels and demons, not secular 
in the least. There are two main characters in the Old Testament, God and the people of Israel. And in today's reading, one of them is conspicuously absent. The Exodus. This is the foundational story of how God saves the Hebrew people. And yet this so-called saving God is M-I-A. We know how that feels, don't we? To cry out to a God who feels absent. To look for the presence, the deliverance of God, and to come up empty. A loved one or a dream passes away. The illness or the unemployment drags on. The ruthless dictators of our own kill and enslave, put kids in cages, deny sick people access to life-saving health care. We look at the suffering and the injustice around us and we wonder if there is a God out there, where is he? And why isn't he doing anything? The Hebrew slaves felt the weight of God's and in this so thick, it's tangible. Soon they will be delivered, sure, but they don't know that. And in the meantime, their elders are collapsing under the weight of the shackles and their children are being thrown in the river. As far as anyone can tell, God has either taken them or we were there in the first place. Against this backdrop of hopelessness, the author of Exodus, story. Of symbolism, imagery from Israel's salvation history. The author of Exodus paints a picture of God's presence that no Hebrew reader could miss. A woman has a baby, and as the Hebrew text literally reads, she saw that he was good. And the people of Israel hear echoes of action in the creation story that John almost read for us. She looks at the world that God has created and smiles and calls it good. The woman hides her baby for three months, but when he gets too big to conceal, she steals up a watertight basket for him. And that Hebrew word that we translate basket, well, it's actually the word for ark. Ark as in and the. And the people of Israel hear echoes of God's action in the story of the flood, where God protects Noah and his family from the waters of destruction. Baby Mo floats along his little ark, and the fish's own daughter comes along. She comes down to the river, she sees the basket, hears the cries of the baby and draws him up out of the water. And the people hear echoes of God's action in the, God's word this from the burning bush, I've seen the misery of my people in Egypt, have heard their cry. I will come down to deliver them. I will draw them up out of Egypt. And then, of course, there are the midwives, Shifra and Pua, the ones who set God's whole story of salvation into motion simply by doing their day jobs. In the face of slavery, murder, and genocide, Shifra and Pua just keep doing what they do best, 
delivering babies. And in them, we see God being actually these two midwives go on to deliver the deliverer. Where is God? God is in the people. I think that's what the author of Exodus is trying to tell us. God is in these women who imitate God's acts of creating, protecting, drawing out, delivering. God is at work with people even while in the midst of suffering and oppression. God is at work in those who find a way to defy death in their daily lives. God shows up in the everyday actions of ordinary people. Could the same be true for us? Where might God be present in our world right now? Where do we see ordinary people doing ordinary things that enact and embody the love, justice, and grace of God? When God seems absent, the author of Exodus tells us, look around. Look at the name, the normal, the things we take for granted. God doesn't need great signs and spectacles to accomplish salvation. Often God's greatest acts are accomplished in the tender, intimate, sacred world of the ordinary. This week, I watched a few nights of the Democratic National Convention in non-COVID times. The Democratic and Republican delegates gather at their respective conventions, and they cast states' votes for presidential nominees in person. It's a bunch of parties. But in light of the pandemic, last week's convention was held virtually. We're getting used to that. And the delegates from each state submitted a short video casting their state's votes. I'll admit, I initially thought this process would be tedious. 57 different videos from 57 states and territories when we already know who the nominees are going to be. It seemed a little like overkill. But you know, as the roll call went on, I found myself starting to tear up. The videos were beautiful. Each one featured a diverse group of delegates casting their votes from a significant location or vista in their state. New Mexico's delegates stood in front of the mountains on the Sandia Pueblo. A delegate from Virginia, my home state, spoke from the Charlottesville Mall, where three years ago, in a, a young woman was killed in a white supremacist terrorist attack. The Montana delegate spoke from a field out in front of what else a herd of cattle. The wind was so strong you could hear it whipping in the background. The I delegates spoke from a cornfield. And when they cast their votes, they asked our nation's prayers as they recovered from the deadly storms that swept through two weeks ago. I think I found the montage so moving because it showed people in their particular locations living out their day-to-day -day lives. Some of the videos had blips and flaws like our online worship always does. Because those who were featured and those who did the filming were ordinary people living out their ordinary lives. Something as extraordinary and world changing 
as participating in the democratic process and casting votes. You know, before God gets into the supernatural legendary stuff of the Exodus story, speaking from the bush, sending upon the land of Egypt, part of the water Red Sea, God first shows up in the simple, ordinary acts of daily defiance and daily deliverance. Midwives who refuse to kill because of the business of life. Brothers and sisters who protect their family. People in power like Pharaoh's daughter who have the courage to be compassionate. People who participate in a political process in spite of a pandemic. Delegates who ask for prayers from a cornfield. Next week, next week we'll read the next chapter of this story and God will show up in full force, smells and bells all decked out speaking to Moses from the burning bush. But this week, I invite you to linger with this story to sit with a God who shows up not in the spectacular, but in the mundane. A God who is present in everyday people doing everyday things. After all, isn't that the point of our Christian story? That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That God so loved the world that God entered into it as Jesus Christ, an ordinary mean ordinary thing. And didn't you teach us that the kingdom of God is within us, that the Holy Spirit empowers us so that we, like Shifra and Pua, like Moses' mother, sister, and Pharaoh's daughter, every other character in God's story, from the prophets and the apostles to the Montana, Montana delegates with their cows and the Iowa delegates in standing in their cornfield asking for prayers can be instruments of God's justice and love and peace in the world. Stay in the story this week and look around. When God feels absent, look around. Look around because you just might see an ordinary person doing things. And friends, I tell you this, you will have seen God. Amen. Our next um, ask unmute Mark. So I'll stall while he gets. Uh, next hymn is Out of Deep Unordered Water. In the purple hymnal, you'll find it on page four. Hymnal, you'll find it on page 494. Let us worship God. Of the love 
of God is the sign of death and rising through the seas there runs a road. There is water in the river bringing life to tree and man. Let creation praise his giver. There is water in the font. Standing round the font reminds us of the Hebrews climb ashore. Life is hallowed by the knowledge God has been this way before. There is water in the river bringing life to tree and plant. Let creation praise us, giver. There is water in the font. Thank you, Mark and Dan. God has given us so we cannot see or know present in us body of Christ is is this God's people gathered. So let us take a moment to invite you all invite you all to unmute. Take a moment and share Christ with one another. You can unmute us. Oh, with unmuted. You. All right. You're unmuted. Peace be with you. Be with you. Christ peace. Peace with all of you. We still with you. We greet all of you guys on Facebook. The, uh, I'd like to say um, Deidre Hughes, Sandy Irby, peace. Glad to be worshiping together and thanks to the prayer group for faithful prayers. Peter Ballon also says peace. I want to say peace to Dan too, since we never see him, but he's always with us. <laughs> Always. Is he really there? <laughs> he might not be. He might be phoning it in. <laughs> he might be on Zoom. Yeah. I better uh, see, not heard. There he is. <laughs> what are you wearing? Oh my God. He's still in his pajamas. Yeah, he might be in his jammy. So is Cliff. <laughs> I mean, with Zoom, it, as long as the top looks good, pajama bottoms are fine. <laughs> I'm going to, as we move to a time of prayer, I'm going to remute us. But I invite you all you're on Facebook, uh, feel free to go ahead and type your prayer requests in. I will read them aloud during the prayer time. And if you're on Zoom, when we come to a time where we share our prayers, you're welcome to type them in the chat or to unmute yourself or raise your hand and share your prayers aloud. So let us come to God in prayer. Gracious God, God of Miriam and Moses, and Pua came to earth ordinary human being, doing ordinary human things. We thank you for this day, for this life, for the love that we share with one another. We pray for your earth, O oh God, groaning under the labor pains, the pains, not labor pains, of climate change. We pray for all people in California, the Bill of C and their families and the wildfires. We pray for people in Florida, for Margaret's family and Bill, Margaret's family and Bill and Laura's family and others in Florida and seeing hurricanes coming this way. We pray for people in Iowa and the Derecho. We pray for all people suffering from natural disasters for the fires in our own God, you created the world and called it good. So we pray that we may live into that promise to be stewards and tenders of creation. God, we pray for your 
in this place and every place. We thank you for the way that you are present on us and in us, the way that you use us to share with one another. God, we pray for all nations, all others who are trying to lead in this truly unprecedented time. We pray for medical workers and public health experts. We pray for all people seeking to care for one another and to keep people safe. God, we pray for all who are in need this morning, for the hungry, the homeless, the grieving, for the employed and those who are certain of what our loved ones are and dear to our hearts. And we pray for those people we don't know and we may never know, but who are indeed your children. God, make us instruments of your peace. Give us the grace to make it through each day and to share your love with one another. And now, oh God, loud and in the silence of our own hearts, we lift up those prayers and joys and concerns that we bring to you this morning. As for whom and for what do we pray? Yes, Cliff and Libby. Oh. Um, for a family friend, Claire, Claire Sebastian, she is in the stage four cancer. Uh, Meredith saw her a couple days ago and it has spread to all parts of her body. And she probably doesn't have a lot of time left. So please for her and her family. God, in your mercy. Your right prayers. prayers. For who and what else do we pray? From Kirk and, and Hannah and Charlie flying to Texas this week. For another daughter's weekend, a mother's weekend, I'm guessing that said, uh, this is their first trip since Charlie got sick with COVID and he continues to recover. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For whom and what else we pray this morning? Yes, Joan. Always for Marnie to continue now to, to maintain that, that uh, good health. It's been such a, a miracle. Hmm. Yes, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lift up prayers for all the students going back to school in whatever form that looks like. And this year for our own Emily, who just started college last week online. In your mercy, hear our prayers. From Joanne Ortiz says for Joneva, Jeanette, Yolanda, and Stan, and all those who cannot worship with us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And if any of them are with us on the phone or face, we're praying for you anyway.
God, I know that you hear all these prayers, all prayers spoken silently or aloud or just in the groans and cries of everyday life. And so we lift them to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has given us so much and so now we take a moment to give back to God. I invite you to give online at presbyteriantaus.com if that's a way that you choose to give. Um, we're at this time to write a check to the church that you can through our mail slot mail. As always, to think of a way that this week you can be at work in the community, this way that you can love and serve your neighbors as Christ taught us to. Friends, God has been generous, and so we are generous in return, and you all have been generous to keep church happening, even in the strangest of times. So let us sing doxology and give thanks to our God. From whom all blessings flow, praise Christ, all people here below, praise Holy Spirit evermore, praise Triune God, whom we adore. O oh God, we are not alone in this isolation because we know we have you by our side. Almighty, powerful one, you graciously give us your grace and strength for us as when we need it. Please use these gifts today to strengthen and nourish your people that are in need. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn. Let me pull up the bulletin, is Guide Us, Guide Me, O Great Jehovah. And the purple, you can find it on 65, and the blue hymnal on page 281. Or, of course, you can always just Google it and sing along if you don't have a hymnal with you. So, Mark and Dan, take it away. Guide me, O the great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the flyer and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death and death and hell's destruction, let me save on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to
So now, people of God, go forth from this place and look for God in the world around you. Look at those places where God seems absent and stop and sit and see. See if you can recognize the presence of God in ordinary people doing extraordinary, ordinary things. Go forth, perhaps look in the mirror. Look and see where God might be working in you, what ways you manifest this God. Go forth to a world that needs delivering and have the courage be like Shifra and Pua, deliverers of the deliverer. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. And as you go, may joy and nothing less find you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Go with us, Lord, and guide.